Hey guys, what's up? Chris RL here. In this video, we are gonna continue our crafting system and we're gonna build the UI for our crafting window. This took me way longer to build than I would have liked, but luckily for you guys, I'm gonna sum it up nicely in the video. Because I don't have the assets or the ability to create a custom UI like we did for the inventory, I decided to build this UI using a free UI pack. You can find the link for it in the description. After importing the Kenny UI RPG pack and placing it in its own folder, I went ahead and created an atlas combining all of our UI sprites. I won't go too in depth about atlases in this video, but if you want to know more about that topic, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on it. To put it simply, an atlas allows our game to draw several images all at once in just one go, instead of having to draw every single one of them separately. Obviously, this helps out in terms of performance. To start out, we'll just create a simple UI image that we're gonna call Crafting Window. We'll need to drag it just under the character panel because we want the tooltips to show up overlaid on top of it if they need to. And objects in the Unity UI are drawn from top to bottom. We'll also need to assign an image to it. I'm going to assign the panel brown image from our UI pack. And now I'm going to quickly position this. So most of the values that you'll see me input here for positions, padding, and spacing of objects have just been discovered through trial and error. There hasn't been much of a, let's say, thought process behind it. So I'm just going to be telling you the values that I tried out that I thought looked okay. I'm not a designer by any means. These are all just visuals anyway. You guys feel free to try out whatever you like. For the sprite that we're using here, we're actually gonna need to change some of its settings a bit. First of all, we're gonna need to go into the sprite editor and change the borders to these values right here. 56 on the left and the top, 40 on the right and bottom. This will allow us to use 9 sliced sprites and stretch the clean area at the middle here and not stretch the indents around the borders. Coupled with that, we also need to change the pixels per unit to a lower value. It's usually at 100, but I thought it didn't look very good, so I changed it to 50. After that, we need to make sure that the settings on our crafting window image is set to sliced and fill center is enabled. Now let's make the UI that represents one of our crafting recipes. Let's create an empty object that I'm just going to call Crafting Recipe UI. And this object is going to be the parent of several other objects that will represent the crafting recipe, like all of the items for the materials and the results, as well as a crafting button. So let's position this at the top to occupy the entire crafting window, but probably with some padding. Now let's make the item slot. Just make a UI image. So for the size of each item, we can look at the size of the item slots in the inventory, which is 150 for both width and height. But we have to take into account one very important detail, is that the character panel has in itself a scale of 65%. So we need to multiply our objects, if we want them to have the same size, 150 times 0.65 which is 97.5. And stuff like this is one of the reasons why I don't usually recommend having objects with a scale other than one, but in the case of our inventory, we had to make it like that, so we need to adjust the rest of our UI to match. And now that we know the actual size that our item images need to have, I'm actually going to make this object have a width and height of 100, because this is going to have a background for the item slot. And then I'm going to create another UI image that's a child of it. And this one is going to have the width and height that matches the item image. Because this one is actually going to be the item. For the slot, I'm going to assign the panel beige image. And once again, we need to check our sprite settings. We're going to have a pixels per unit of 50. And in the sprite editor, we're going to have borders with the exact same values as we did for the panel brown. 
Let's also change the item image to something useful to allow us to have a better feel for how this UI is going to look like. We know we're going to need several of these images side by side, so let's add an horizontal layout group component to the crafting recipe UI and disable all of the child expand options. Now let's duplicate the crafting item slots and let's add some padding to the horizontal layout group and some spacing as well. And with the extra padding, the size of the parent object doesn't really match the size of all its children. So we can see down here from the layout properties that the preferred height of this object is actually 116. So let's just input that into the height field. And now we need to create an extra image for the arrow. And for this, I'm going to choose the arrow silver right. And I'm going to click the Set Native Size button. And the idea is basically this. We have the materials and then an arrow and the results. So obviously the arrow doesn't really look quite right. I'm going to rename this object to Arrow. And to make this look good, I'm going to create another empty object. That's going to be the Arrow Parent. I'm going to put the Arrow Image inside the Arrow Parent. And then center it. And the arrow parent is going to have a width of 40. This allows the arrow to have an extra little bit of spacing around it. And I think it looks much better this way. And lastly, we need to create the button that is going to allow us to actually craft the recipe. So just create a new UI button. For the image, I'm going to choose the button square gray. It's going to have a width of 70 and a height of 100. It's also going to be sliced with fill center enabled. And once again, we need to check the settings for the sprite. This time, we're going to leave the pixels per unit at 100. And in the sprite editor, it's going to have a border of 20 all around. For the text, I'm just going to literally tell you what I did because it was just trial and error. I think it looks quite all right. I used the same font that we're using for the inventory. I copied the color from this inventory text right here. I put it at the size of 20. The text is going to be craft in all caps. And I even gave it a little rotation of 20 degrees on the z-axis. Oh, I also disabled rich text because I don't think we're ever going to need that here. And we can also disable the raycast target. Now with our crafting recipe UI done, we know we're going to need several of these all throughout the window. So we're probably going to need another layout group, a vertical one this time. There's going to automatically position all of our crafting recipes from top to bottom. And besides that, if we have more recipes than this window can fit, we also want to probably be able to scroll through them. So we'll also need a scroll rect. Let's add that by right clicking the crafting window and then selecting UI and scroll view. I'll stretch it to occupy the entirety of the window and then add a little bit of padding so that we can avoid these little spikes around the borders here. We can completely remove the image background and the canvas renderer and we can also disable the horizontal scroll and coupled with that we can even remove the scroll bars from the scroll rect because we're not going to be using them this time although I am going to leave them here just disabled, in case we ever need them. We can also now change the size of the viewport, which was a little bit smaller to accommodate for the scroll bars. We can now change it to have a padding of zero on all sides. As for the content object, this is where we're going to be placing all of our crafting recipe UI objects. And since we know we're going to be needing a bunch of these organized from top to bottom, we can already add the vertical layout group component to the content object, disable the child force expand options, and enable the child control size options. The child control size options just basically allow the horizontal layout group component in the crafting recipe UI object to determine the size of the object automatically. We should also add a content size fitter component to the content object because this is going to allow it 
to stretch as much as it needs to fit all of the crafting recipe UIs that we want to add to it. So if I duplicate this object a bunch of times, you can see that the content automatically increases to fit all of those. Okay, so apparently our crafting recipe UIs are two units of width shorter than what the content could fit. So just to make this match up nicely, let's grab all of these and increase their spacing to 8.8 .8 to allow them to be exactly 570 pixels of width. And with this done, that's it for our crafting window UI. Come back for the next video for the implementation of how this is going to actually craft our items and add them to the inventory. Thank you for watching and bye bye.